bit of tattletales. Okay, so a lot of you guys have been asking me to do this, so here you have. We're going to do the Real Housewives of Potomac in under five minutes. Everything you need to know about the episode, and if you want a deep dive and you want to rant, go on and listen to the live I had uh, with Alex Salt, of course, not paid by anyone, and Mel C. But let's get into this quick recap. Okay, the scene opens with Candace trying to make her mom proud of her, but we all know nothing Candace does will ever be good enough for Miss Dorothy until Miss Dorothy is in control of the one true love of her life, her first baby girl, Candace. Candace thinks it's about money. Honey, it's not about money. She just wants to control her baby because if she controls her baby, her baby will never leave the house and she will control it by hook, crook, or money. I mean, there's worse ways a parent can avoid, uh, uh, control you. A lot of our parents control us with mental abuse. At least she gets an unlimited Amex card. Moving on. Giselle now cuts to teaching Grace to drive in a Mini Cooper. Jamal's Mini Cooper. Now we all know Jamal's not. Is Jamal coming? We all know the answer to that. He is not. But when he left town, he left everything, including that oddly tacky Gucci Mini Cooper. I just can't see... Uh, Jamal Bryant and his tall self getting out of there or Giselle because Giselle looks like she's pretty cool too but it is the perfect cute car for Grace I hope Giselle plans on giving it to her they almost run over the candy the cameraman Grace is screaming Giselle's crying she's scared for her life she even gets out but you know what it's a cute mother daughter moment moving on Number to messy Mia and if you don't know how messy Mia is go look at my goddamn tweets Go look at, I'm sorry, what am I saying? Go look at the story I did on Mia's tweet. It's only a couple of minutes. She is back to being messy, insinuating that Chris was messing around with her and that Candace is transphobic. Oh Lord, all because she called her ass handsome. And let's face it, we are with the handsome Mia. Mia is a very, very handsome woman. Now listen, Mia is all once again getting caught in her lies. She's talking, I remember she first came on, she said that Gordon owned 15 franchises, they built 14 franchises, but now they were already Gordon's and Gordon selects a manager. Y'all, this is nothing but dress up for work. Barbie, she has her Fisher Price play set. I am telling you, next week it's gonna be like, well, I don't really manage them, but Gordon lets me come in and walk around and look big and get coffee. That is where we're going. We also find out that Mia's like a little bit jealous about her mom and sister's relationship. How do we know that? Because while Mia is using a spoon to do eggs, she's literally talking about um, the fact that like, why don't you come get the, uh, um, ice cream with the kids and this and that like i'm fun i can hang out but it seems like and i understand right mia's mom for whatever reason by the time mia got older could get had conquered some of her demons to the point that she could really focus on the younger kids it is what it is moving on we go over to robin we find out that ron ron really wants a little girl and to be honest with you robin and ron would make a pretty little girl because we know they made handsome sons one's trying to get her to lay down and have that baby meanwhile robin is like yo the renovations are going to become 100k you can tell that robin is definitely the breadwinner because rob ron had that glazed look on his face that you can only have when none of the money being spent wasted or made is yours his eyes glazed over and he said oh for real the renovations for the house are 100k under budget ah oh, so what's up with my baby girl because that's the only thing he's controlling right now but moving on but before we do it's funny but you know what let's move on and let's talk about this because it's funny that robin had so many comments about um chris not living off of robin when robin you seem to be the one making the moves but we'll talk about that moving on on to miss candy pants candy um dancing she is at rehearsal i give it to her she is brave now you guys know that i might not you know i can do a two-step right but when it comes to pop and lock and twerking i gotta leave that for someone else i admire the fact that candy was showing her rehearsals where she was trying to get it together and she was off all beat and the dancers were dancing 10 steps in front of her and she couldn't give it together but i admire candy because that was actually really really courageous of her right now right um chris and her talking about are you going to be there a lot of you got first of all chris is not being paid he's doing this out the kindness of the heart any husband won't support their wife but you guys need to understand even if he wasn't the manager even if she had another manager besides chris chris and candace are the most two codependent people in the world. They genuinely need to be around each other. Candace wanted her man there for moral support and she didn't know how to say it. Or maybe she did and Chris was like, listen, I gotta work because this is what I do. A lot of people said he's unemployed. Let me tell you something. It is literally 
COVID time, all the restaurants closed down. He is hustling, doing what he needs to do. But we'll get to the bottom of his finances a little later. Drive back video, y'all. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. But you know what? I give it to Candace for staying calm, staying cool, collected. Chris popped up in his little apron, working his butt off. Giselle, you better to keep your mouth shut about Chris coming in his apron, talking about where's the food? Where's the food? You should have been asking him to bring you a man. That wasn't right, but I still said it, right? Now, here's the thing, right? They all came, all of them looked a hot mess, except for Escala, that, but not a hot mess. They all looked like you would expect 40 year olds, and I'm sorry, 50 year olds, and Mia, we know you're not 36, 50 year olds to look. Karen actually looked the most, most stylish to me outside of Escala. Wendy had on her Tupac thing, y'all gonna drag me. I thought it was cute, cause y'all know I love a good Tupac hit rat too, right? So what else happened? Candace made it work. Producers go, borrow, beg, borrow, and still pull everybody's cars up. You notice Escala's car, um, and uh, Escala's car and the Grand Dame's car were the only ones that were asked to pull up. Why is that? Why is that? Because nobody else, you notice they didn't ask to pull Jamal's little Mini Cooper up, but they pull the cars up, they do close shots, the girls are bouncing, Candace makes the best thing. It is a great video. Chris has a great time, but let's not talk about that dark cloud called Miss Dorothy. That is Candace's mama. I'm not gonna talk about her. I hope to God that they are doing this as a storyline, but let me just tell you, she was fluttering around like a little, little whispers, little street whispers into each day talking about how Chris is unemployed. He don't got no money. He don't like the fact that Candace is lipping off her. Giselle puts her two cents in, and I get it, I get it, I get it, Giselle. But at a certain point, don't disrespect somebody at their shoot. For all of them, Mia really violated by going up and being like, so can I ask you a question? Is Chris being paid for this? Mia was so messy for asking that and dead wrong. But you know who is even more wrong? You know who was even more wrong? Candace's mommy was wrong for answering that. I wish my mom would do that. That'd be the last time she ever talked to me and anybody else that I cared about. But what am I saying, mommy? If you're watching this, I know you would never do this, right? But it was just, I don't know what is going on with Miss Dorothy. Yes, I do. Like I told you in the beginning, Miss Dorothy wants Candace to be her one and only. She's doing everything she can to break up her and Chris because Candace and her used to be codependent. And now she's being codependent with Chris. And now she wants that old thing back. Or she, she never even wanted that. That thing to leave she would beg borrow and uh, and max out the amex to have her little candy pats right under her i mean at the end of the day is that such a bad thing being loved so much by two people it's a chug of war it must be exhausting for candace but it's really 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 good for us moving on round this out karen the grand dame is still lying about her stealing stealing wendy's ideas listen this is one reason that karen her hubris I love her. She's super funny. You got the idea from Wendy. What's wrong with saying Wendy inspired? But that's the thing. Karen will never give anybody else credit. She has to be the first. She has to be the greatest. And good for her. She has a little damn. We all know from um, Mirror Candle Company. She was in the chat. Go check that chat if you want a long, stretched out version of this. About how if you already have everything in place, it only takes a week to actually get a candle manufacturer to manufacture it and slap your name on it. How do we know that Karen was not planning this for a while? She sniffed a candle and said, hmm, what scent is this, Vanilla? I thought you were working on scent development. I thought you were doing all this. Also, the fact of the whole time that you were working on Grand Dame, you literally said for two years, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Do I think that Wendy was stupid for telling Karen her idea? Not really. I know people are going to steal. I know people are going to be inspired. But I would just be weird to be sitting there talking in front of someone and they take your idea and then try to act like they didn't take it. That was weird to me. Wendy is sitting there playing sexy secretary to Eddie, giving him the business outline. Eddie the whole time, eyes are glazed over like, what's she taking those glasses off? Let me see what that new booty do. Come on, Miss New Booty. I found you, Miss New Booty. Get it together. That's what Eddie was thinking. She goes through her pitch. I don't know what this dumb secretary thing she is playing. It was cute. I get it's her storyline. Cause Mia, you got four degrees and you're a correspondent on Fox News. Girl, come on. You already know. I already know you have the, and you're Nigerian. I already know you have that business plan in place. I'm just waiting to go execute. And I will go support because I do love candles, right? Last but not least. Last but not least, we have the grossness that it's Ashley Darby. I know in the beginning, I honestly thought that Ashley was trying to be gross about her body on purpose. And I'm not body shaming her. I just don't want to hear about that your uterus is falling out or you feel like you have a bubble in between your legs. I feel gross even saying that. I thought she was saying it. 
to keep the tales from the Crip Creeper, that leprosy patient, Michael Darby, that she's married to off of her. But then when she was alone with her family, she kept being gross and just saying too much info. She was like, yeah, at first I was really worried about having an attractive nanny. Girl, your nanny is not Claudia Schiffer or Naomi Campbell. Stop it right there. But I guess she's cute enough for Michael, but then again, Ashley, should you really be worried? Because from what we've seen from all the leaks and the grinders and all the things that were posted on the brown, um, Michael prefers this woman more Candace's complexion than your nanny. That's all I'm saying. So girl, and maybe she knows that you don't have anything to worry about. She does say that Michael is making a move to be a casting director. Y'all get ready for Me Too movement, Potomac style, because if any of the lawsuits against Michael Darby are to be believed, we are in for some ratchetness, but even more, He's planning on having Ashley starring in the movies. Honey, that is just what he's telling you. Because we remember with that kangaroo restaurant, the way he had you working as a manager and then played you in front of everybody and basically fired you. And you had to threaten to divorce him so you could go back into that restaurant and, and hold your head tight. You can believe you're going to star in those movies if you want. And even if you do, I hope it's a musical so we can have, have you ever had a feeling while you dancing off beat? to coffee and cream. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and check out Ashley Darby's TikTok. There are beats around, but not one of them is next to Ashley. All right, y'all, that was The Real Housewives of Potomac. I hope I stayed under five minutes. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you guys later. Mwah.